I'm about to go to the gym. It is 9 a.m. and today's a really busy day. It's a busy day in the life of a graduate student in water resources engineering. This is my first semester of grad school. I just recently graduated, so I'm on my way to the gym. I am going at 9 a.m. because I have literally meetings every single hour up until five o'clock. So I gotta squeeze in the gym somehow and I'm going in the morning today because I don't have time this afternoon. Okay guys, I just got back home. I'm running late because I have my class that starts at 10 a.m. and it's 10.15. So we usually spend the first five to 10 minutes doing like random questions of the day and just kind of to get the, the Zoom class going. But since I'm around like 15 minutes late, I didn't miss too much class. So I'll be just fine. Um, but let me go ahead and log in. And I'm still like shaking from the gym, like cause it was a hard gym session. So I'm still out of breath. I'm gonna join without video because I'm not ready yet. All right, I'm in my class now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tune into my class. This is my ARC GIS class, which I'll get into what ArcGIS is in just a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and start taking notes. My class ended, that means shower time, and I have about a 30 minute break. I'm already so tired. <laughs> Hey guys, so I didn't wash my hair, but I put on a little bit of makeup and I feel so much better now. I'm gonna go ahead and start making some lunch and my class starts in like two minutes. So actually, let's go to my computer and then I'm gonna log into my Zoom session and just kind of watch as I make my lunch and multitask because really that's what grad school is all about is multitasking kind of just got to do it all. So my next class at noon is my seminar class, which is worth one credit hour and it's requirement for all graduate students. They have to complete the seminar class and they only meet once a week, every Wednesday for 50 minutes. And it's really actually kind of cool because you have different individuals come and present about their research or the work that they're doing in their field. So today's presentation is on regional growth and metropolitan planning. How do we forecast growth? So basically understanding where population and employment are going to occur, where growth is going to occur. Um, we can then take that and feed it to a travel demand model. And then that helps us understand where traffic volumes and congestion are gonna be the worst in the future. Story time, right? Okay, if you watched my last video on my day or week in my life as an engineering student, you would have noticed that my desk was over there in uh, that area. However, recently, um, in the past like two weeks, maybe even three weeks, I moved my desk to this location and now I have a really nice white background which as you see is much better than my kitchen background that I had before. And so whenever I have my Zoom meetings, I feel much more confident that I'm just showing a plain background rather than like my entire kitchen. Sometimes I don't always do my dishes and like it just, it looks better. And I never really like uh, virtual backgrounds that much. So I was never one to put on a virtual background, but now I feel much better putting it here. And then also the lighting is just so much better because I have my window right here. Anyways, I have a meeting with one of my students. I don't even know what to call her or my mentee. Let's my mentee. Okay. I am mentoring her. So I'm in a group of like this research group, right? With my advisor and um, she's one of the students. She's an undergrad student in um, chemical engineering actually, but what she needs help with is ArcGIS because I am taking a class on it. That's what I had this morning at 10 a.m. What GIS stands for is Geographic Information Systems. And what it is, is it's a software 
that a lot of engineers use to map their results. And it's a really neat software and it feel like I get to kind of express myself creatively using it. Um, you can really make the maps as pretty as you want and as colorful as you want. And you can graph literally anything, let's say, like today in my class we were talking about um, like the top brands in each state of the United States. So for some reason All Subs was the number one brand in New Mexico and then Hooters was the number one brand in Florida. But like stuff like that, you know, that does, has nothing to do with engineering. But let's say for example, my mentee is um, trying to graph amount of solar energy produced in each state. So this is a map of the fall and spring solar energy in the United States, where we first can look at the fall data. So the red on the top represents roughly between two to three kilowatt hours of solar energy per day. So this map essentially says that the Southwest area of the US, you know, New Mexico, parts of Texas, in California accumulate a lot of solar energy in a day versus up here in the north uh, you're looking at less solar energy produced in a day especially so in the fall if you start looking at the spring solar energy the numbers are a lot higher still indicating that the southwest regions with the purple and the blue these are really good areas to actually have an algae distribution plant because in my mentee situation, she's looking at algae growth and the more solar energy that these states have, the faster algae grows. So you really want to have distribution plants down here versus you don't really want them up in the north because algae will grow a lot slower since there's not as much solar energy. So this is one of the many ways that you can use ArcGIS. Uh, to show your results, to show data. So that ties into a little bit of my research. Now my research doesn't focus on algae growth, but it does focus on creating maps to visualize the data that I've collected. So to break it down, my research is about atmospheric water capture. So that is using the moisture in the air and converting it into drinking water. My project is funded through Pepsi, so they're really curious to see how they can produce water in a sustainable way using renewable energy so that they can use that water in their drinks. That's like what my research is on. However, my task in this big old project is creating a techno-economic analysis. So what that is, is really breaking down the cost of how much it's going to take to extract this water from the atmosphere and how much it's gonna to take to use renewable energy because we wanna make this sustainable so we don't want to use fuel, we wanna use energy from either wind turbines or solar panels and using that to, to create the energy that we need in order to run these units. And the units that we need to run in order to produce the water or to capture the water are dehumidifiers. So at this moment in time, I have been doing a lot of research on dehumidifier units and the cost of them and the capacity of them. We're looking at three different functional units at the moment. So capturing 10 gallons a day, capturing 100 gallons a day and 1000 gallons a day. And we're kind of ranking the cost of each one in different categories. So I personally think my research is really cool and something that I haven't heard about like just one year ago. And then at three o'clock, so it's 1.55, at three o'clock I'm going, well actually I need to be there at three, so more like at 2.40, I'm leaving my apartment and I'm going on a field trip, my first ever field trip of this year. And honestly of college, we're meeting at Tingley Beach, which is right by like the zoo area in Albuquerque, but it's for my open channel class, so it should be fun. I'm actually excited to actually get out of my apartment and go outside. It's actually a really beautiful day today. The high is 61, so I'm excited to get some sun and actually interact with a few of my peers that I haven't seen in a really long time. So. I do plan on taking my camera with me, and so hopefully I can get some shots of the nature. So let's go ahead and go! Yay! Field trip time! 
time. Made it to Tingley Beach. Look at that. Oh well, just kidding. <laughs> I just wrapped up my field trip at Tingley Beach, uh, which also is like right next to the Rio Grande. So now we're actually gonna do a little bit of a social hour, so I'm excited to go get some drinks and some food. <laughs> 